that's got you. Well, just have a look here. Perhaps you've got me. Perhaps you ain't. What's that? I don't know, I'm sure. That's your sister. A petition. Have you heard yet? It was rejected. Well, that's that. Paul, Paul, listen to me. You can't give up hope. I haven't. Oh, what's the use? Listen, Jeffrey Richmond has arranged. What can he do? He's been our best friend through all this horrible time. Now he's arranged for me to meet the Home Secretary today. Don't you see how different it would be to talk to them personally? I'll make them see that they can't. I'm an ungrateful devil. I hope she won't be much longer. We've got to be at the Home Secretary's office by 12.30. I don't think it'll do much good, Richmond. Though it was decent of you to arrange the interview. How is he? I think he's a little more hopeful now. Shouldn't we be starting? Yes, we can just do it. Miss Gray, every particle of evidence in this case has been thoroughly sifted, finally before the Court of Appeal. There is therefore nothing that can be done to help your brother. You must understand that in this matter, I am merely the mouthpiece of the state. But we're supposed to be civilized. Surely there must be some way of stopping the state from committing murder. State? Murder? Isn't it murder if the state kills an innocent man? Miss Gray, your brother has been tried and found guilty. The Court of Appeal sustained the original verdict, and a petition for reprieve has been rejected. There is absolutely nothing to be done. The law must take its course. I... I have every sympathy, of course, for you. Here, Miss Gray, drink this. Let me have that. Thank you. I'm all right now. I hope everyone will forgive me for behaving like this. Hadn't you better rest longer, Miss Gray? No, thank you. I'm perfectly all right. Will you take me home now, Neil? Are you sure you're all right, dear? Yes. Only ashamed of myself. May I lend you my car? No, thank you. Neil will drive me. Thank you again. I wish I could do something that would really help. Oh, you've been wonderful, Jeffrey. Oh, Mr. Kemp, was that Gray's sister who just went out with those gentlemen? Yes, poor child. Fancy such a sweet girl like that having such a fiend for a brother. That dreadful knife. Say, the head was almost severed from the body. That will do, Miss Johnson. You know, I have the most curious feeling about the Gray case. Really, Mr. Kent? That poor child's faith makes me wonder whether, in spite of all the evidence, there could have been a mistake. I wish that I had the power to help her. Yes, sir, Lionel. Close the Barstow files today. Yes, sir. Has Inspector Chan arrived? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Chan is not here yet. Excuse, please. Observe a humble presence. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, sir Lionel, Mr. Chan has just come in. Show him in at once. Certainly, sir Lionel. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I didn't hear you come in. Excuse silent movement, habit of profession. Yes. If you will come with me, the Home Secretary will see you immediately. Thank you so much. Inspector Chad, Sir Lionel. 
Was that the Chinese detective who caught Bastu in Honolulu and brought him over here? Yes, a wonderful piece of detective work. The British government, Mr. Chen, is therefore very deeply indebted to you. Much honored to be of humble service to British Lion. It's remarkable, Mr. Chen, how you ever suspected Barstow. He puts up an excellent front. The front seldom tell truth. To know occupants of house, always look in backyard, <laughs> provided there is one. Excuse, every front has back, and little things tell big story. Even in this room. Why, what do you mean? Today, you have had most distressing interview with lady, much disturbed lady who is very anxious. That's quite true. How did you arrive at that? Observe, please. Tearing hands suggest torn heart. You certainly have sharp eyes, Mr. Chan. <laughs> Humble eyes have much practice. It just bears out what our chief inspector of the police told me today. We were speaking of the Martin case. He said no other detective in the world could have solved it. Extravagant praise, but thank you so much. And now, Mr. Chan, perhaps you'll tell me if there's anything we can do to assist you in your journey back to Honolulu. Uh, very grateful, but all passport mysteries have been solved. Hello? Nightbridge 4243? Miss Gray, please. Oh. This is Sir Lionel Bashford's private secretary speaking. Would you ask Miss Gray to call me immediately she returns? Thank you. Yes. That is humble name. I, I'm Pamela Gray. Uh, a friend sent me to see you. I must speak to you. Uh, much regret, but no time. In one hour, catch train for boat to Honolulu. Please, I'm desperate. I implore you at least to listen to me. Please to enter. Mr. Chan. I'm in the most terrible trouble. There's no one in London, no one in the world who can help me except you. Hmm. World is large. He, lowly Chinaman. Oh, you, you must help me. You are much troubled. You rest. You, you know this trouble? Uh, yes. My name is Howard, Neil Howard. Miss Gray and I are engaged to be married. Oh. That is good. If you will honor the other room with your presence. You stay here and rest here. I'll explain everything to him. Thank you. Excuse, please, but I must catch train. You talk, I listen. Begin at best place. Beginning. You must have read in the papers about the stable murder case. Only headlines. Miss Gray is Paul Gray's sister. His only relative, in fact. That is bad. I can give you the facts very briefly. The murder was committed three months ago in the stables of a Mr. Richmond's country house in Redfordshire. Gray was Richmond's hunt secretary. Hamilton was the murdered man. He was a weekend guest. At the trial, the circumstantial evidence against Gray was overwhelming. But his sister is utterly convinced of her brother's innocence. And therefore, she thinks that... One moment, please. Uh, you are... Oh, oh, I should have explained. Uh, I'm a barrister, what you would call an attorney. I defended Gray at the trial. You have appealed case? Yes. But in England, there's only one appeal. Gray's was rejected. He is to be hanged in three days. Then 
only way to save brother is to prove someone else real murderer. Exactly. And find him before nine o'clock on Friday morning. Now, now four o'clock Tuesday. Only 65 small hours. Ladies' faith in powers of humble self, most puzzling. Detective cannot work miracle. Yet a miracle is the only thing that could save him. One question, please. Very important. You yourself believe brother innocent? Well, uh, is that question necessary? Please. Please. You believe brother innocent? No. Of course I... You! Pamela. Don't try to excuse yourself. I never want to see you again. Pamela, wait! It's been a great season, Gardy, don't you think? Yes. I'm sorry it's nearly over. So am I. You don't know how swell it is to be back here again. <laughs> you Americans mustn't get too keen on hunting, or there'll be no foxes left for us. <laughs> <laughs> or, or horses either. What? I didn't say anything. Where's the meet on Thursday? Here. That means a good day. And just the country that suits Hellcat. By the way, Mary, I've decided that you're not to ride that mare again. She's nappy, isn't she, Jardine? Definitely. Not a woman's horse. Reluctantly compelled to agree. The mare's incorrigible. Hmm. Incorrigible. <laughs> She's mine and the best hunter in the country. <laughs> Who are you to give me orders, anyway? Your future husband, darling. Had you forgotten? <laughs> Listen. Give you a word of advice. Never get married. <laughs> Funny. Please be quiet. See what I mean? Well, in spite of advice, I'm still going to marry you. And in a month, you'll do as I tell you. You're just a bully. I'll go and find someone who really appreciates me. <laughs> and I'll help you. May I have a word with you, sir? What is it, Phillips? I agree with Richmond on two counts. Mm -hmm. One, you're adorable. Jerry, please. Two, you shouldn't ride that mare. She's crazy. <laughs> Another bully. I can't bear the thought of your ever being hurt. Garton, excuse us a moment, will you? Certainly. What's the matter, Geoffrey? Pamela's here. She wants to see us at once. I wonder what's happened. Pamela. Mary. What's the matter, Pamela? Oh, I hope you don't mind my coming here like oh, this. My dear child, you couldn't have done anything better. Could she, Mary? Why, of course not. I... I feel as if the bottom had dropped out of everything. But what's happened, Pam? Neil thinks Paul's guilty. What? Oh, it's impossible. Why, at the trial, he... He's never believed Paul was innocent. And today he told someone who might have helped. And now I've got to start all over again. Oh, my dear. Geoffrey, what can we do? My dear, don't worry. We'll think of something. I tell you what. You take her upstairs. Give her the West Room. Then we'll get rid of everyone who isn't staying as quickly as we can. And... Yes, and then the three of us will talk this thing over properly. Come on, dear. Oh, Phillips. Sir? Miss Gray is staying. She will have the West Room. Yes, sir. See to it that she's not disturbed on any account. Very well, sir.
Good evening. Uh, Miss Gray is here. Uh, Miss Pamela Gray? Miss Gray has retired. If you wish to see her, you must return in the morning. Uh, highly important. I see her now. Miss Gray has retired. There are strict orders. She's not to be disturbed. Return in the morning. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a nice cup of tea, miss. It'll make you feel ever so much better. No, I don't want anything. Not a nice hot cup of tea, miss. Oh, do. Please leave me alone. Excuse, please. Mr. Chair. Don't let him get his hands on you, miss. Don't be stupid, Perkins. I know the gentleman. Now go, please. And don't say anything to anyone. Thousand apologies. Unceremonious entry due to butler's doubts of humble self. But why are you here? I have seen your brother. And you believe? That what you think may be truth. Then you are going to help? Humble endeavors will be in that direction. Mr. Phillips! Mr. Phillips! We'll all be dead in our beds. What's the meaning of this conduct? Well, we do. There's an horrible murdering man climbing all over the house. Have you been drinking? I have not. Didn't I see him with my own eyes climbing into Miss Gray's window? What? Swell me, it's the truth. And he's hypnotizing her. I think most of the people that testified the trial in here. Mm -hmm. There's Mr. Richmond. Oh, Phillips, take Mr. Chan into the study. Very well, madam. This way, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Hello there. Oh, hello. I say, what about a little drink? <laughs> no, thanks, Bunny. Well, what about committing a slight spot of hoppery? <laughs> Sorry, Bunny, she's dancing with me. What, again? Oh, Bunny, please be quiet. Can't we sit this one out? I want to talk to you. I thought you wanted to dance. I just wanted to be with you, that's all. I wish you wouldn't go on like this, Jerry. I can't help myself, you're so... Please, Jerry. I'll explain later. We've got to get everyone here who gave evidence at Gray's trial into the study. Will you get rid of the rest, darling? Make any excuse but get rid of them while I collect the others? Yes, dear. And now you all know who Mr. Chan is and why he's here. And I feel certain that you'll all give him every possible assistance. Thank you so much. Uh, if you will all sit, please. Now, please, uh, if Mr. Gray not guilty, then some other person is murderer. Only method to save Mr. Gray is to find this other quick, in 57 hours. Now, please, tell briefly events of sad night. Well, after dinner, Gray came in here and Hamilton followed. Uh, please excuse, uh, they both live in this house? No, Paul Gray was my hunt secretary and stayed here during the hunting season. But Captain Hamilton was just down for the weekend. Captain? Hamilton was soldier? No, Air Force. 
But he and Gray had never got on very well together. They were always... Uh, Excuse, please. Ancient history, not necessary. Sorry. On the night of the murder, Hamilton followed Gray into this room. There was no one else here, but they were heard quarreling violently. Who heard? Mr. Fothergill, Major Jardine, and Mr. Garton. That's right. Devil were around. Hamilton shouting, Gray shouting, sounded like a, politi a, pol a political demonstration. Bunny, please sit down. Thank you so much. Other witness, please? Yes. They were quarreling, all right. I heard them from the hall. It was about that chorus girl. Excuse, please. Only events. Sorry. And third witness. Where's Garton? He wasn't anywhere about. I sent Phillips to look for him. Where could he have gone? Do you want to wait? No. Time is enemy here. I think Mr. Jordan can tell events that took place after quarrel. Well, uh, I, um, I thought I'd better stop the row before any of the women heard. I was just outside the door. Father Gill was behind me. That's right. Continue, please. Through the door, I heard Hamilton say, remember what I've told you? And then Gray shouted something. And then I heard those windows opening and slamming shut. Yes. Uh, you enter? No. Obviously, one of them had left the room, and I... I decided to mind my own business. Admirable British quality. And uh, next event, please. Oh, two hours later, Garton and Jardine went over to the stables and found Hamilton's body. As they were walking over, Garton noticed Gray coming back towards the house. I wonder where the deuce Garton is. Why were you going to stable so late at night? One of Garton's horses was sick. We were going to have a last look at it before going to bed. I understand. Then nobody see Hamilton alive after bang of window? No. I haven't been able to find Mr. Garton, sir, but I'll continue to look for him. Thank you so much. There is something which belongs here. Is it twin of this? Yes. And murderer use missing knife? It was lying by the body. The police have it now. I see. There were fingerprints? No. It was maintained that Gray wore gloves. <laughs> Strange that crime of passion should be committed with gloved hand? Yes, but the prosecution held that this was a premeditated crime. And unfortunately, a pair of gloves Wait, were found... Wait, please. In... If Mr. Gray, not murderer, must forget all evidence at trial, no time to expose lies, must expose truth. Now, please, would much like everybody to go with me to stables. Stables? What for? A crime to be reconstructed. Method of French police. Sometime very good. Garton was over there when he saw Gray disappear behind that hedge. 
And uh, where was body found? In the stables near the end box. I see. Please. In absence of Mr. Garton, you and Mr. Jardin help proceed with reconstruction. Uh, certainly. Jardin. Uh, let us proceed. Uh, humbly suggest you be Hamilton, you be murderer. It seems like a lot of childish nonsense to me. Look here, Richmond, do, do we really have to do this? Mr. Chan is in charge, Jardine. Uh, maybe I'm not clear. Uh, crime to be... Yes, I understand, I understand. Thank you so much. Here, here. What's all this? All right, Lake. You can go back to bed. Very well, sir. Beg pardon, sir. Who? That's Lake, my stud groom. Regret, do not understand English. Only American. Well, he's my chief groom. My head lad. Boss horseman. Oh, huh? I catch. And now? Well, what the deuce? Only night. From study? You are murderer. You are Hamilton. Kindly going to stable. Right. Please take. Oh, look here, this is outrageous. Take knife, please. Hmm. Now, you go in. Pretend to strike as prosecution say real Hamilton was struck. Then leave knife where you find real knife. Now, please, proceed with murder. Oh, steady, old man. Steady! I say, can't we get out of here and do this somewhere else? See what your nonsense has done? Uh, what troubles, noble animal? That's Lady Mary Bristol's horse. See what happens with your foolery? What, you might have gone... That'll do, Jardine. Hellcat will be quiet now that Lake's here. He can do anything with her. Control of noble animal by lowly man. Most interesting. That light, it was on when you find body of Hamilton? No. Garton switched it on after. Then not on now. If you think I'm going through with this tomfoolery the now, I'll we can do is to follow instructions. Oh, all right, all right. I wonder if they've forgotten all about us. I wonder. Hmm? Come on, Juddy. Betty, please be quiet. Look here, I've had about enough of this. Please, now drop knife in place where you find other knife. That is right? Yes. Please rise. When can I do something? What's going on here? I'll explain. It's the reconstruction of the crime. <laughs> no, the, re the reconstruction of the crime. The crime. You know, it's French. Practically infallible. You know, you act what's happened and then you know who's done it. See? Oh, Bunny, please. I don't. Where have you been, Jerry? Just walking, then in my room. Heard an awful racket in the stables. What horse is cutting up? 
Hellcat, she always gets like that, you know, if Lake isn't with her. Hey, where have you been? We've been looking all over the place for you. Uh, this is Mr. Garton. Do you want to speak to him? Uh, not now. All this is finished. Right, well, shall we go back? Uh, wait, please. One question. Uh, Mr. Gray was secretary to Hunt. Is the new secretary? Yes, Major Jardine. Oh, uh, please, take ladies and gentlemen back to house. I stay here. On to something? I want to talk to number one horseboy. Right. Uh, can you find your way back? Yes, thank you. All right, everybody, come along. Mr. Cham will join us when he's ready. Excuse, please. What do you want? I am a very curious man. I ain't got no time to waste answering questions. I got my sleep to get the same as other people. It is our last question which prevents sleep. What are you trying to do? We don't like foreigners messing around here. <laughs> Englishmen mind own business. Not always Chinamen. If you've got anything to ask me, ask me and get it over. Not as I'll answer. Three questions only. Very simple. First, you were here, upstairs in your apartment, when murder was done? Apartment? That ain't no blooming apartment. That's me loose box. You were in this uh, box when murder was done? No. Why don't you read the newspapers? I wasn't here because it was my night off. I was out, see? With my girl, see? I can prove it. I did prove it. I understand. You make a holiday. Thank you. Now, second question. This noble animal, he was here in the same place on night of murder? If you mean Elcat, she's a mare. Yes, of course she was here. She's always here. What of it? I see. Thank you. Third question. You did not then see body of Hamilton lying there? I tell you, I wasn't here. I was out. It was my night off. Ain't that enough for you? Yes, enough for present. Perhaps more later. Thank you so much. Mr. Chan, tell me, have you found out anything? Yes. Something. I do not understand. What is it? You were in house here the night Hamilton is killed? Yes, I was here for the weekend. Why? Did anyone in house hear noise from noble animal the night of murder? Oh, you mean a horse cutting up? No, I remember no noise. And I haven't heard anyone else say there was. Perhaps it wouldn't be heard. Oh, yes. Mr. Garton hear noise from house just now. Really? No noise was mentioned at trial? No. Very good. Tell me what all this means, please. Don't you realize there's less than three days before... I know. I will tell you. Certain noble animal, cat of hell, always cut up when strangers near, unless lake is present. But noble animal make no noise when Hamilton killed outside its apartment. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, and Lake was supposed to be out that night. Oh, Mr. Chan, have you spoken to him? A little, but enough. What do you say? Many words meaning nothing, except that he is afraid. You mean you think he is really the... Thoughts are like noble animal. Unchecked, they run away causing painful smash-up. But what are you going to do? Aren't you going to see him now and make him tell? No. Later, after sunrise. But why waste time? Oh, please, don't you see how little time there is? Why must we wait? Lake now with himself. Alone. He thinks. 
he is afraid. He will be more afraid. More fear, more talk. More talk, more chance for us. What else can you expect but to have your throat cut when there's murdering men climbing all over the house? Roger said he looked like a nice, kind gentleman. Kind? He's a sneaking, murdering... Oh! Look at him now, creeping about. Why did he leave the house at six and pretend he wasn't coming back till afternoon? Good morning. Why, what, what are you doing down here? What I am asked to do. You, you mean you're helping Pam, Miss Gray? That is humble endeavor. But may I return question to giver? What do you do here? Well, I, I wanted to see Pamela, but I was thrown out. Thrown out? I mean, she wouldn't see me. She gave orders. But you're still here. Yes, I. Yes, like the fool that I am. I... Oh, what's the use of trying to explain? You wouldn't understand. No. There are many things I do not understand. What do you want? Uh, to see, please, Mr. Lake and talk to him. You can see him, but you can't talk to him. How this? Suicide. And what's it got to do with you? There's no need to take that tone, Thacker. This is Mr. Chan. He's staying with me. He's a detective himself. Chan, this is Detective Sergeant Thacker of the County Police. Delighted to meet. How are you? What on earth induced Lake to kill himself? When you talked to him last night, did he... Uh... One moment, please. Yes, it is all there. Nearly good imitation. Imitation? What do you mean? Murder. Murder? Mr. Chang enjoys his joke. Murder, not very good joke. Quite unfunny. I don't understand what your idea is. No idea. Facts. Little things tell story. See? Money talks. What are you driving at? Man in lowly station does not kill self when possessing much money. Aren't you rather jumping at conclusions? No. Conclusions jump at me. Note man's hand. Observe. Gun held with finger on trigger. But death wound in center of brow. Only way to make that wound, use thumb on trigger. So. By Jove, you're right. To make that wound with finger on trigger, 
Impossible. But who on earth would want a murder lake? Answer to that question, highly desirable. I see what you are driving at, Mr. Cheng. You mean it wasn't suicide. That was humble deduction. I must make a note of this. That's our method here. Make notes of everything. Large sum of money, wound, center of forehead. I humbly suggest only authority should know this, not suicide. I don't quite understand. Let murderer feel safe. That's a good idea. Dead against regulation, sir. I'll have to take this up with the chief constable. Oh, it's all right. I'll speak to him. He'll understand. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello. They told us in the stables about poor Lake. Awful thing. Anything we can do? No, nothing, thanks. Everything's been done. I'd have said he was the last fellow in the world to kill himself. But if you're sure we can't help... No, I'm quite sure, thanks. Everything's been taken care of. Thank you. I've noted it all down, Mr. Cheng. Thank you so much. Oh, Mr. Phillips. What do you want? Have they told you about Lake? I heard that the unfortunate man had committed suicide. Suicide or not, it's death. Don't forget the words of Alice Perkins. There'll be death in this house until we get rid of that creeping, murdering, foreign man. This is no time for gossip. Go on about your work. Who's gossiping? Oh, Phillips. Yes, madam. Have you seen Mr. Chan? No, madam, I have not. But, uh, lonely Chinaman here. Oh! Saints alive! Oh, really, madam, I had no idea the, uh, gentleman was here. A habit of being sometimes invisible, very useful. Oriental, not British. Is there anything further that you require, madam? No, thank you, nothing. Very well, madam. Mr. Chan, have you seen Lake? Yes. What did he say? What did you find out? Nothing. He is dead. What? Someone killed him. Trying to make it seem as if he killed himself. Lake? Dead? Then all that you hoped for last night? Oh, I told you to see them then. I'm sorry. I was wrong. We must start again. Start again? With less than 48 hours? Oh, I wish to heaven I'd never seen you. You give me hope and then... Hope is not gone. Lake cannot talk, but death talks. It tells something we did not know before. That real murderer of Hamilton is here. Oh. It does. For lonely man, Lake had too much money. Hush money. Given by murderer. When I frighten Lake, murderer must kill. Couldn't we tell them about Lake's murder? Make them see that this proves that Paul is innocent? Wait, please. Murder of Lake proves nothing. Except to us who believe your brother innocent. But what are we going to do? There's so little time. I work here. Your work is to see that brother is told of hope we have for him. Yes. Yes, you're right. And thank you. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Morning.
Want something? I'm busy. A lot of hunt business to attend to. Yes, I see. Business of chasing fox. Very interesting. Yes. Last meet tomorrow. Mm. Military training useful for business of chasing fox? Now, what the deuce do you mean military training? You are major, therefore soldier. You are hunt secretary, therefore I think perhaps... Now, look here, my good fellow. In the first place, fox hunting has nothing whatever to do with the army. Huh? Second, I was never a soldier. Third, would you mind not interrupting me? So sorry, but understood, uh, Major, army title. If you must know, I was in the Air Force, not the army. Thank you so much. Paul, oh, darling. What have you come for? To tell you that Mr. Chan... Has he found out anything? What's he on to? What's he doing? He has found out something. What is it? There's been another... Speak up, lazy. I'm sorry. Something's happened down at Jeffrey's. Something that makes it certain that the real murder is still there. Has he told them at the Home Office? If they knew that, His they'd have to... His isn't strong enough yet, Paul. They wouldn't realize any connection with you. But he knows. Oh, Paul. There's no time. It's all useless. Oh, but it isn't useless. There is time. Two days. Not quite two days. Why can't they kill me now? Why do they make me wait? Please, darling. Please take hold of yourself. Get out. Don't worry about me. Don't think about me. I'm dead. I've got a rope around my neck, and in 40 hours, they're going to pull it tight, and my neck's going to break, and I'll be dead, dead! Stop, for heaven's sake, stop! You'd best leave him, Venus. Do you really think I should go? Yes, miss. He's much better when he's quiet like in here, with just me and Bostock to look after him. All right. I'll go. Is Miss Gray with her brother? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll wait. Please, dear. I've got to talk to you. Why wouldn't you see me this morning when I was down at Richmond's? Please leave me alone. But you've got to listen to me. You must give me a chance to explain. Let me go. Haven't you done enough? Don't you understand I never want to see you again? But how could Lake's death possibly be connected with the Gray case? A case like inside of radio. Many connections, not all related. You mean you've got something? Much, but do not know what is. Frequent state of mind for detective. I want to think you're right about Gray, but sometimes I... Well, I can't imagine all that evidence was wrong. A lot of evidence. Too much. You can lend automobile in morning? Why, of course. Where do you want to go? To airdrome at Farnwell. Air Force camp? What on earth for? Charlie Chan, very curious man. Want to uh, answer to many questions. Yes, but what to... Uh... Oh, Jeffrey, I've been looking for you. Good evening. Chan and I were just talking about... I humbly suggest uh, such topics are not interesting at the moment. Excuse, please. Don't think about it, dear. But, Geoffrey, what's happening to us? All these dreadful things one after the other. You mustn't worry so, Mary. Well, I'm frightened. I, I keep feeling some other dreadful things going to happen. Oh, darling, don't be foolish. 
But, Jeffrey, with poor Pam in the house, I think it's awful to be leading our normal, useless lives. Why, we're even going to hunt tomorrow. It seems We're only doing exactly what Chen wants us to. <sighs> I suppose I'm being very silly. No, darling. You're being what you can't help being. A very lovely person. And now, madame, bed for you. It's going to be a hard day tomorrow. What on earth? Excuse, please. When death enters window, no time for life to go by door. What do you mean? I will show you. Intended for my address. Very curious missile. From strong air pistol. Yes, but why should anyone want to? Someone is afraid. Hey, what's going on here? I've been acting part of Bullseye. I don't follow you, Mr. Chang. Somebody's just tried to kill Chen. What? We must have the ground searched immediately. I'll call my men. Wait, please. Whoever tried to kill a humble self has had much time to hide. Good night, Phillips. Good night, sir. Now, come along here. Let's have a look at you. As I was coming up from the terrace, I didn't see anybody, but I heard this drop. What's that? I think original home of this. I must make a note of this, Mr. Cheng. Excuse me, sir. What is it? Two of the constables are asking for Sergeant Thacker. They've captured a man lurking in the grounds. Tell them to bring him in here. Very good, sir. There you are, Mr. Cheng. My men got him after all. Maybe. Howard. I don't know these affectionate gentlemen. But if they'd let me alone for a moment, I might take off my hat. You needn't hold him. Who are you? Explain yourself. Uh, surname Howard. Christian name Neil. Profession, barrister at law. Financial position, sound. Health, good. Social standing, somewhat... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't ride as fast as that. Well, this is ridiculous, Becker. I'm very sorry, sir. I've got my duty to do. This man has got to explain why he is loitering about in newer grounds at this time of night. Mr. Richmond's a friend of mine, and I... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse me, sir, but were you aware of this gentleman's presence in the uh, vicinity? I... I know Mr. Howard well. He... What is this? What's half the county police force doing here anyway? The police are here because Lake's dead, and they are investigating his death. And what's more, a murder has just been attempted in this room. Immediately afterwards, you're arrested in the grounds, having no satisfactory explanation for your presence. I shall have to detain you. Excuse, please. But Mr. Howard has business here. Why, what do you know about it, Mr. Chang? Well, he come to see me. To see you? Certainly. I want private talk with Mr. Howard. So I telephoned him this morning. I see, Mr. Chang. I see. 
But why didn't he come to the house in the ordinary way? Answer that. Well, I, I, uh, it is plain. Mr. Howard is man of feeling. He does not want to disturb household. I must say I can't follow this, Mr. Chang. Well, it's perfectly simple, isn't it? I'm very sorry, sir. I know my duty under regulations. I shall have to detain this gentleman. Please. Before you make arrest, there is something you should see. There is nothing to see. Well, what? Not loud, please. I want to talk to you privately. I follow, Mr. Chang. I follow. Very smart trick, Mr. Chang. If you insist that Marksman was Mr. Howard, I insist whole affair one great big joke. Meaning that you won't give evidence or make a charge, Mr. Chang? You are good marksman, Sergeant. You hit bullseye. Regulations are clear. I ought to detain him. If you want Wild Bird to sing, do not put him in cage. Wild Bird. Of course it's true. Richmond just told me so. Under the circumstances, do you think we should hunt? Yes. They particularly want us to go on as if nothing had happened. You say, what's all the trouble? You fellows look as if you're going to a funeral or something. Someone tried to kill Chan last night. What? Yes. Shot at him with some sort of an air gun through the window of that study. Have they any idea who did it? Apparently not. It was very late and nobody was about. Why should they want to kill Chen? Well, I haven't the remotest idea. Thank you. Oh, Phillips, have you seen Mr. Chen? Not since seven o'clock, Your Ladyship. He went away in the Rolls Royce. Did he say when he'd be back? No, Your Ladyship. All right, Phillips. Thank you. Mary, whatever's the matter? You look as though something awful had happened. Oh, I don't know what to do. If only Chan had been here. But what is it? What's happened? Last night, just before I went to bed, I happened to look out of my window and saw someone. It seemed strange at the time, but I didn't think anything of it until just now I overheard something. But what is it? If I leave a note for Chan, would you promise to give it him as soon as he arrives? Of course I will. Well, Mr. Chan, what can I do for you? You were here when there was unfortunate young officer, Hamilton, who was murdered? Yes, I was. He was good officer? Excellent. Splendid in the air. And brilliant a theory. He's quite an inventor, too. Inventor? Very interesting. What are things he invents? Oh, small improvements. Gadgets, you know. Uh, one of them was the adaptation of the Merton gyroscopic stabilizer. Do not understand, but uh, sound useful. Well, I should say it was. It was taken up by the Air Ministry and is now in general use. I see. Can you say, please, when was last invention made by Hamilton? Oh, let me see. Oh, I think about 18 months ago. No more inventions since? No. About that time, he got a lot of new outside interests. Took up fox hunting. He got tangled up with that girl and so on. Been better for the lad if he'd stuck to his work. He was uh, in the habit of talking about invention work to you? 
to anyone? No. He was a queer chap. Kept pretty much to himself. And not very popular with his brother officers. He had no friend? One. Flight Commander King. Commander King? He is still here? Oh, yes. Uh, may I see him, please? Here. Please think. There is perhaps man's life on your answer. There was one thing, but I don't know how far he went with it. This was big invention, yes? He had a wild scheme for silencing warplanes. Silencing warplanes? You remember he do work on this? Drew plans? Not that I know of. But he'd never show anything to anyone until he was sure it was right. Other question, please. None of this was mentioned at trial of Mr. Gray? Why, no, of course not. Why should it? That had nothing to do with anything. I don't catch your drift, Mr. Chan. Drift? Catch me. Thank you so much. But I tell you, Chan has made me realize that Paul is innocent. Oh, it's all so useless. But Pam, dear. Even if Paul is saved, I can't ever forget that you told Chan he was guilty. Suppose he believed. But I did that to help you. I believed Paul was guilty. But I didn't want anyone else to have the chance of making you believe it. Oh, please understand. I love you. And I, I'm trying to help you. Oh, Neil, my darling. Then you, you do believe me? Yes. But don't you realize that there's less than a day and a night before they take Paul? Don't lose hope, dear. I believe Chan's going to save him. But there's so little time, only 22 hours. Good morning. I have looked for you. Oh, Mr. Chan, what? Wait, please. No time to lose. You have fast car? Yes. You know this fox chase today. Which way they go? I can make a good guess. You must guess right. You will take me now? I'll get the car. Oh, Mr. Chen, what's happened? I've returned to Holmes just now. They give me this. What does she mean? Lady Mary in much danger. If murderer find she knows something, he will strike. Remember Lake? Remember attempt on humble self? Must find lady at once. This is speedy automobile. I've got 120 out of it. 120. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Where I'd find them. And nearly find ancestors. We must be going off to draw another cover. What are you doing here, Chad? Where is Lady Mary? I don't know. I haven't seen her for the last 15 minutes. See, Garton, where's Mary? I can't say. I haven't seen her since we passed all spinning. Have you seen Mary? Perhaps yeah, she's cast a shoe. The last I saw of her, she was going strong. I say, where's Mary? I don't know. Richmond! Hellcat, Mary, the chalk pit, come on! Yes, 
can't you tell me something? A serious fracture at the base of the skull. With care and luck, we may pull her through. There is a chance, then. A well, very good one. Nurse. Yes? Is there? How is she? I think she has a very good chance. Has she come to? Oh, no. She'll be unconscious for at least 24 hours. Only a few hours to save Mr. Gray. Therefore, this conference necessary. This is all nonsense. You've got no facts. Why, you're no near anything than you were when you first arrived. Oh, yes. I know why real murderer killed Hamilton. You mean you know definitely that Gray didn't kill Hamilton? Yes. That Gray was the only person that had a motive for killing him. You are wrong. There was another who had big motive. Today, I find Hamilton had secret invention to silence warplanes. What's all this got to do with a murder? Plans of invention stolen to sell for much big money. Hamilton find thief, then thief must kill. This is all wild theorizing. Let him go on, Jardine. Remember, he's trying to save Gray's life. Everything nice for murder until I come then certain people to be made quiet. Lake, because he knows truth. Me, because I near truth. But where does this all lead to? To this. Someone here, in this room, is murderer. This is just another of your asinine tricks. You pretend to find out all sorts of things, but really you know nothing. I know this. I can catch murderer if I find plans stolen from Hamilton. But how would finding the plans prove anything? Unplans will be fingerprints. And fingerprints will match those of someone here. Is he asleep? I don't know. Shut up. I'm not asleep. What's the time? Pretty early. I said, what's the time? Quarter to five. Quarter to five. Five to six. That's one. Six to seven. That's two. Seven to nine. Four more hours. Would you like anything, mate? A cup of tea? No, I don't think so. No. I don't want anything.
What the deuce do you want? No noise, please. I want your help. It didn't seem like that to me when all the others were in here. You looked at me as if I might be your man. Much regret, but necessary to point suspicion to all. I don't see what you expected to gain by telling everyone everything you know. There is uh, one thing I have not told. Today, murderer tried to kill Lady Mary. What do you mean? Mary's accident? No accident. Alone with Lady, murderer blinds eyes of noble animal. You mean? Tonight, I examined defunct noble animal. On face were dried tears and something else. I wipe it off. Mr. Howard, take it to analyst. He telephoned me just now, report. It was Pepper. Pepper? Yes. Who was it? Tell me. I do not know. That is why I want your help. Yes, but how? Now, murderer, much afraid of fingerprints. He will try to destroy plans. We catch him then. Do you mean you know where the plans are? Downstairs, somewhere in study. But that's impossible. Attempt on my life made there. Must have been nearing hiding place. I see. All right, what do you want me to do? Come with me to study. We wait for murder. What's the matter? Look. Someone has been here. Perhaps we're too late. I was here, in this room, before I go up to fetch you. That was not open. Here. You watch. Please excuse blank cartridges in pistol. Stand back there. Stand back. The police are in charge. I find these plans earlier this evening, but regret no fingerprints. Now, fingerprints not necessary. Thank you so much. Chief for Richmond, I arrest you on a charge of murder. Better get him right, Sergeant. Richmond's an alias. He's not even an Englishman. His real name's Paul Frank. And you? You have a real name? I'm Captain Seaton, military intelligence. We've been after Frank for years. We nearly caught him when he worked England before. But this time he put us off with all this front. Very expensive front. Yes, he was playing for high stakes. But he won't play any more. All right, Sergeant, take him away. You call the governor of the prison, and I'll get in touch with the Home Secretary. Yes.
to London and by and by and bring family. Twelve children and one wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got another toast. To the greatest detective in the world. Um, not very good detective. Just lucky old Chinaman. Well, I think it was miraculous the way you built up that chain of evidence in three days. Chain not complete. Most important link not yet in place. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Chan? Link you dropped in my hotel room. Observe, please. Case now complete. 